Have you ever looked at a photo and thought, this just needs a bit more drama, something to make the light really pop? Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do exactly that, using just the gradient tool in Affinity Photo. It's a simple process, but the results can be stunning. Let me show you how. I'm starting with the image open in Affinity Photo's Photo Persona. The first step is to add a new pixel layer. Look in the Layers Studio panel and click the Add Pixel Layer icon at the bottom. Now we've got our new empty layer. Make sure that it's selected before you do anything else. Just click on the layer if it isn't already highlighted. Next, head over to the Tools on the left side of the interface. We're going to select the Gradient tool, or you can just press G on the keyboard. At the top, change the Gradient Type now to be Elliptical. As soon as you do this, Affinity Photo fills the entire pixel layer with a gradient. That's expected, so don't worry. Now in the top left corner, you'll see a little circle. This is the gradient. Click and drag it to position it and resize the gradient. I like to place the gradient where the light should be naturally, like in an area of the sun or a bright cloud. To make it easier to see what you're doing, reduce the opacity of the pixel layer. You'll find the opacity slider at the top of the Layer Studio panel. Now let's adjust the shape of the gradient. First click and drag the center of the gradient to reposition it. Use the handles then to reshape the ellipse. Notice also that one of the arms has got a small dot in the middle. That's the feather control and we'll be coming back to that later. But here's something to watch out for first. If you resize one of the arms of the gradient, the other arm moves with it. To adjust them independently, hold down the control key. That lets you drag each arm to the size that you want it to be. By dragging the arms like this, we can stretch out one side to shape the light. Then we can do the same for the other side. Once the gradient is in position, it's time to change the colour. Right now, mine goes from white to grey. But we're first going to make it go from white to black. We're doing this so that it's easier to see the gradient. Click the right colour stop on the gradient line first and set it to black. This makes it easier to see how the gradient now fades across the image. You'll also see that midpoint dot again on the line. We can drag this now to change the feathering of the gradient, move it left to soften the edge, and move it right to make the effect more focused. When it looks right, click the black stop again. We don't want this to be black, we actually want it to be transparent. To do that, set the opacity of that colour stop to 0%. Now we have a gradient that fades from white to transparent. The next step is optional, but it often works beautifully with landscape photos. Instead of white, we can sample a warm colour from our image, something like an orange or a golden tone. To do that, we first need to hide the pixel layer. Just click the dot icon next to the layer in the panel. Now we can clearly see the image underneath it, and we can sample the colour. Click on the gradient colour again, then use the colour picker to sample a tone from the image. Look for a warm highlight, maybe sunlight in a cloud or a bright area of the sky. Once you've sampled it, the gradient then runs from the sample colour through to transparent. We can then turn the pixel layer back on in the Layers Studio panel. You'll now see that a soft warm light's been added to the image. Next, we'll add a white balance adjustment layer to this one. We'll be using this to fine tune the colour of the light. Click the adjustment icon at the bottom of the layers panel. Then, choose the white balance from the list. Affinity adds the new adjustment layer to the top of the layer stack. But we don't want it there because it's going to affect the entire image rather than just our gradient. So, drag the white balance layer down with your mouse and drop it onto the gradient pixel layer. This clips it to that layer so that only that layer is now affected. 
Now we can increase the temperature slider by moving it to the right. That warms up the light and it really enhances the glow. At this point, the blend mode of our pixel layer is still set to normal. That means the gradient is just sitting on top of the image. We want it to actually blend into the image to look more natural. To do this, we'll change the blending mode from normal to overlay. You can also experiment with other blending modes, but I find overlay works well for this. That gives the light a much more natural look. If you feel the effect is too strong, reduce the opacity setting of the layer. But there is another, more precise way to control this. Click on the Blend Options icon for the pixel layer. Now we can control how the layer blends with the tones beneath it. To do this, drag the left side of the line down to protect the shadows. We can also pull the right side down as well to control the highlights. And you can even adjust the midtones with this as well. This is a very powerful way to blend light naturally into your photo. If I toggle the pixel layer off and on, you can see the difference that it's making. Now, there is one more refinement that we can make. For this, we need to select the Move tool, either from the toolbar or by pressing V on our keyboard. You'll see a blue bounding box then appear around the pixel layer. Now we can drag the corners or edges to stretch and reshape the gradient. What's important to realise is, it doesn't actually need to match the size of the image. In fact, sometimes it's better if it goes beyond the edges. As you do this, position the gradient where you like. Then, fine-tune the effect again using the Blend Options, the Opacity and the White Balance. And there you go. A stunning lighting effect created entirely using the Gradient tool. If you'd like to learn more techniques like this, my course From Ordinary to Extraordinary is packed with them. I'll include a link to it in the video description. Now earlier, I skipped over some of the details of the Blend Options dialog. That's because I cover them fully in this video. I highly recommend you watch that next. Thanks for watching today. If you found this helpful, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. I'll see you soon in the next video.